In this video, I'll be showing you how I turned a regular drinking glass into a terrarium that can live for years to come. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to start by putting in the substrate. Here's the mix I use. I'll put links in the description to all the components so you can make this yourself. I use a spoon to put a generous amount of substrate into the glass. You might be wondering why I'm not putting a drainage layer in this terrarium. The answer is simple. Because this terrarium is so small, it's very easy to precisely control the amount of water in the substrate. This makes a drainage layer unnecessary. In larger terrariums, a drainage layer should always be used. I gently compress the substrate with the back of my hand and then add a little more to gain more height. This terrarium tool, which is simply a stick with the cork on the end, is a super useful tool for patting down the substrate. I ensured that the substrate sloped up towards the back. This will help create a good sense of depth. Now it's time to pick the hardscape. This is my very unorganized hardscape shelf. It's got a range of different rocks, stones and sticks on it that are all great for terrariums. Today I'm going to be using these small pieces of dragonstone. They have a good amount of texture and detail on them, making them perfect for small terrariums. I'm going to keep the hardscape for this terrarium extremely simple and just use the dragonstone. If you wanted to, you can add some sticks and twigs to accent the stones. Like always, I took some time to experiment with multiple different layouts and structures until I found something I was happy with. I ended up settling on this simple three rock layout. I want to fill the back up with a little more substrate so I can build some more height. Having height in the back of the terrarium is a simple and easy way to improve the sense of depth. And in a small terrarium such as this one, having good depth will make it look 10 times better. Once again, I gently pat it down into place. With the hardscape complete, it's time to move on to the moss. This is cushion moss. It's a slow growing moss that loves to grow inside terrariums. It's perfect for beginners and it's super easy to grow. I tear off small chunks and then trim off the base. This won't hurt the moss at all, but it will allow the moss to sit much closer to the substrate, which will result in a better looking terrarium. I then use some long tweezers to carefully place the moss inside the terrarium and lightly press it down onto the substrate. I continue the same process until the entire terrarium is filled with moss. In case you didn't know, I actually have an ebook that contains everything you need to know to make and keep healthy terrariums. It's packed full with useful information from the best moss and plants to use, the best species of microfauna to introduce, and exactly how to care for a terrarium. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. When planting moss in a terrarium, it's much easier to do it in small chunks at a time and assemble it almost like a puzzle. And make sure you gently press it down onto the substrate as it will wick up moisture and use it to grow. Even with just the moss in, the terrarium is really starting to take shape. This is Photonia. It's one of the most popular terrarium plants due to how easy to grow it is and the vibrant colours you can get it in. I'm going to take a few cuttings and use them inside this terrarium. With some scissors, I simply cut the stem at the desired height. Although they have little to no roots at the moment, the terrarium will provide perfect conditions for them to root and grow. When planting, I'm going to plant them up to the first set of leaves. They will send out new roots in a few weeks time. The high humidity of the terrarium provides perfect conditions for these small cuttings to propagate. These long tweezers are extremely useful for planting these cuttings. Next I'm going to take a cutting of this Ficus quercifolia or more commonly known as oak leaf creeping fig. This is a slow growing plant that loves to grow inside a terrarium. With some scissors I simply snip off the section I want to use. It's a perfect plant for small terrariums as these leaves are pretty much full size. Now I'm done with the plant, I'm going to take it and put it back in its propagation box. This is where I keep and propagate some of my terrarium plants so I don't have to buy more every time I want to make a new terrarium. I've got a video about terrarium plant propagation, I'll link it at the top of the screen if you want to check it out. To plant this cutting, I'm simply going to place the stem on top of the moss. It will send out roots that will go through the moss down into the substrate. Now I'm going to take a small cutting of a plant that grows in one of my vivariums. I'm planning to do a video on both of these tanks in the near future and maybe even rescaping them as they're almost two years old. Let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to see on the channel. I'm going to pull out a few cuttings of this plant called Baby Tears. Once again, it's a very easy plant to grow in terrariums and its leaves stay extremely small. It is, however, a relatively fast growing plant, so more maintenance may be required than the other plants inside this setup. To plant it, I place the stem on top of the moss and roots will soon shoot out. That's the planting done for this terrarium, but it's not finished yet. These are springtails. They are tiny bugs that will help keep the terrarium clean and healthy. They do this by eating mold and decaying matter throughout the terrarium. You can buy them from reptile and amphibian shops, or if you wanted to find your own, they often live under damp leaf litter. 
Now I'm going to give the terrarium a very light watering. I give it a few sprays and only water until the substrate is damp. It's very important not to overwater the terrarium. After wiping down the glass, the terrarium is almost complete. Without a lid, this terrarium would dry up and die in no time. I like to use these clear acrylic lids for terrariums such as this one. All that's left to do now is place the terrarium under an LED light or in a bright spot in indirect sunlight and watch it grow for years to come. If you make terrariums and you're not sure how much you should be watering them, check out this video here.